Hello, welcome to this first lesson, which is installing Unreal Engine 4. We're going to be covering creating an Epic Games account on UnrealEngine.com and then downloading and installing the Epic Games launcher, which will allow us to download and install Unreal Engine version 4.20. So to get started with downloading Unreal Engine 4, you will first need to open up your web browser and come to unrealengine.com. On this main page, up in the top right corner, you'll see a big blue download button. Go ahead and click this button. And for the first time, if you don't have an account, it will bring you to the Epic Games account creation page. Go ahead and sign up for an account and then it will bring you to this download page. On this page, it says you must agree to the appropriate end user license agreement. Basically, when you click this proceed to download button, it basically means that you automatically enter and agree to the end user license agreement that you can view on this link here. Once you've done that, we can proceed to the download. And this page will ask us which platform we want to download for. So either Windows or Mac. So go ahead and download and install the Epic Games Launcher for the platform you are currently running. So I'm going to assume you've downloaded and installed the Epic Games Launcher now. So go ahead and launch it and log in with your Epic Games account. The first time you do this, you might be in the home section of the launcher. Now we want to be in the Unreal Engine section and we can do this just by clicking on the Unreal Engine button down the side here. So this brings us to the Unreal Engine section. Now we want to download and install Unreal Engine 4. So where do we go to do this? Well on the top bar we have these different category tabs and one of them is the library tab. So let's go to the library tab. The library tab is where we can download and install different versions of Unreal Engine 4. And it's also where we can browse and launch the Unreal Engine 4 projects we have on our machines. Now there's different versions of the engine we can install. And throughout the duration of the course, we're going to be sticking with just one engine version for consistency. The version we're going to be using is Unreal Engine 4.20. And you can see that I already have 4.20 installed on my machine. You can see it shows 4.20.3. So Epic Games will patch particular versions of the engine if any bugs are discovered in them. It's possible that it might be 0.4 or 0.5 by the time you take this course, but I wouldn't worry about this. Just focus on the main version number here, which is going to be 4.20. So 4.20 is what I want you to download and install. To add an engine version, click this gold yellow plus icon just next to where it says engine versions and it will add an engine installation for us. Before we hit install, we first must choose an engine version. We can just drop down the version number here and we can choose 4.20. Now I already have 4.20 downloaded and installed, so I can't select it here. So just double check that you select 4.20. And once you've done that, we can hit install. We're now prompted to choose an install location for the engine and it suggests one for us but if you're not happy with this you can click the browse button and browse to any directory on your machine where you want the engine to be installed to. So before we hit install let's just click the options button because I want to show you something. The option button shows you everything that's been downloaded and installed with the engine and if we scroll down we can see this target platforms section here. Now, if we're never going to develop on any of these platforms, we can actually uncheck all of these and this will greatly reduce the download size of the engine. OK, we can just hit apply and now we can hit install to start downloading Unreal Engine 4.20. Hey, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be taking our first steps in Unreal Engine 4. We're going to begin by creating our first blueprint project for the game Marble Run and then we will move on to learn to how to navigate Unreal Engine 4. To do this, we're gonna start breaking down the editor's interface. And we're also gonna take a look at what makes up a level. So we now have Unreal Engine 4.20 downloaded and installed. To launch the engine, we can simply hit the launch button on our engine installation. We can minimize the launcher after we've done this and we should see a splash screen showing the progress of the launch. If it's your first time launching the engine, it won't do this instantly, so we just have to be patient with it. And once launched, we are brought to the Unreal Project Browser. Again, here we can browse the projects that we currently have on our machine, but we can also create Unreal Projects by switching over to the New Project tab. And this is what we want to do. We want to create a new Unreal Project. 
Now it tells us to choose a template to use as a starting point for your new project. So there's different starting points for us. We can choose between Blueprint or C++ projects. Of course, this is a Blueprint course, so we're gonna stay on Blueprint and there's different templates we can choose here, but we're not going to use a template. Instead, we're gonna start with a completely blank project. So we want to make sure we're on the Blueprint tab and that we have blank selected. And now we can move on to adjusting some settings for our project. And it does say, don't worry, you can change these later in the target hardware section of your project settings. So what we can do here can actually be changed at any time. But to start, we can choose a target platform. We can choose between mobile or tablet or desktop and console. We're developing for desktop here, not mobile, so I'm gonna leave this as it is. We can change the quality of our target platform, basically the graphics. I'm gonna leave mine at maximum quality. And finally, we can choose if we want to include starter content. Now we actually do want to include the starter content because this adds lots of materials and objects that we can work with to start building games with. So make sure to include the starter content. Next, we can move on to choosing a location on our machine for the project to be stored. I'm happy with the suggested location here, but to change it, you can click these three dots to browse your machine to a directory where you would like your project to be stored. And finally, we can name the project. So I want to name my project Marble Run. But notice when we do this, we get an error. It says project names may not contain a space. So we're gonna start seeing this a lot as we create a name assets in Unreal. We want to use a camel case naming convention, meaning multiple words are joined without spaces with each word capitalized. So really what we want to do is name this Marble Run without any spaces there. And now we can just go ahead and hit create project and this will launch the Unreal Engine 4 editor for our project. Okay, so here we go. This is our first real look at the Unreal Engine 4 editor. And we're gonna begin by breaking down the editor's interface. Straight away, we see there's lots of different things going on. We see these chairs and table in the center window. On the top bar, we see all these different buttons. And on the outskirts of the editor, we see these different individual tabs that make up the editor's interface. When we pan our mouse around the editor's interface, we begin to see different areas highlighting. This means that we can click and drag and we can resize the interface to our own liking. Okay, so we're beginning to see customization already with the editor. With the different tabs that are open, we can do this on any tab. We can click and drag on it and we can undock the tab and place it on our screen and move it about to anywhere we want. But we can also dock them back onto the editor's interface in a different location. Okay, so now we're really starting to see customization of the layout of the editor. What happens if we accidentally close one of these tabs? So if I close this mode tab, how do I bring that back? Well, if we come up to Window, which is just next to File and Edit, we can click this and we can restore different tabs here. So I'm gonna restore the Mode tab now. And now it restores it back to its original location. We can even undock this and redock this onto existing tabs as well, and we can tab them together. I'm just gonna go ahead now and close all these tabs and so we can just focus in on this center window where we have these chairs and a table. This window is the viewport. It's showing us the game world. It's showing us the current level that is open. And we can see this down in the bottom right corner of the viewport. It says we're in a level that is named minimal default. Okay, but what is a level? Well, really at the foundation, a level or a world is just a collection of different individual actors. And we can see this further by restoring the world outliner. If we come up to window and then world outliner, we can see that the world outliner shows us a complete list of all the different individual actors that make up our level. And it says here that we have 15 total actors. Okay, we can see that we have some chairs, a floor, statue, and table, and these are static mesh actors. If we just move this over to the side, it says that the type of actor is a static mesh actor. So we're gonna to begin to see that there's lots of different actors inside Unreal Engine 4 as we move throughout this course. We can hide actors and toggle the visibility of them by clicking and closing this eye and clicking it again to toggle the visibility of them. Okay, so we've taken a look at the world outliner and actors that exist in our level. 
But what is this minimal default level? Where did it come from? Well, if you remember back, we added in some starter content and we can view the starter content by coming to the content browser. If we come to window and content browser, we can restore the content browser by hitting content browser number one. Okay, if we restore content browser number two, that just adds a new instance of the content browser that we can place anywhere on our screen. So that doesn't really mean anything. It just opens a new instance of the content browser. Well, we have the starter content in here. If we double click this folder, it shows us more content and we can double click the maps folder and it shows us this is where the minimal default level is. If we double click this, it's just gonna restore the same level because this is the current one that we already have open. So we've taken a look at how we can customize the layout of the editor's interface. So right now there is something I want you to do. I want you to change the interface, have a go at redocking tabs in different locations, and then let's move on to creating a minimal interface. To do this, I want you to close all the tabs so we just have the viewport left. Okay, so pause the video here and have a go at that, and then when you're ready, just hit resume. Okay, so well done. I wanted you to get some hands-on experience with the editor's interface. So I asked you to redock tabs in different locations. To do this, we can just click and drag the tab and we can release it on different areas of the interface. We can also dock them together with other tabs and we can toggle between them. I then asked you to go ahead and close all the tabs so we just have this minimal interface look showing us only the viewport. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how we can navigate the viewport and how we can begin to edit actors that exist in our levels.